better. Live from better. New York, it's a oh, show that had good. surgery and now has a steel plate. A bionic man. Below their never a doubt <laughs> tattoo. Yeah. It's first things first. The reinforce never a doubt. <laughs> that that has been a lot. Yeah. This year. Works out That's right. <laughs> Today, Jerry Jones says there's a few quarterbacks that will win the Super Bowl, and Dak is one of them. But will it be with the Cowboys? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Meanwhile, according to Robert Sala, the Jets are having a quiet offseason. But who is under more pressure this year to make some noise? Wow, I'm cooking. That was good. <laughs> and finally, who is saying that J.J. McCarthy is the best QB in the draft and what team might move up to grab him? Hmm, we discuss alongside Chris Bessard. I'm Kevin Wilds. Nick has a fresh haircut and yeah. a steel bar in his arm. Yes, I do. But I'm glad to be here. Okay, this quarterback, best quarterback in the draft, then. One of the wildest takes ever. The outfit is an interesting. I, I, I mean, I'm not drafting a guy. Wild, top you've three. been critiquing everyone's outfit. That's outfit? a weird outfit to wear for a guy. It's a weird. Like I'm gonna dress like an angel. Bill on my Murray birthday. every day. It's an a angel. <laughs> it's a what? weird it's a outfit. White sweatsuit. If it was black, it'd be fine. It's so. a weird outfit. What are you right. If guys? it was blue, navy blue, it'd be fine. I mean, it's just a sweatsuit. It's just odd to dress like an angel <laughs> for your pro day. <laughs> hey, we start with Dak's contract. The general sentiment was that there was an extension coming down the interstate. Jerry did say he was all in on extending the players who are currently on the roster, but Florio he sees it differently, writing, with no ability to tag him in 2025 and no apparent inclination to extend the deal now, the Cowboys seem to be willing to let him finish the contract and see what happens. Oh, would this be a smart move by Dallas, Nick? It'd be one of the boldest moves we've seen a team make under the current salary cap constructs. We have not seen a team willingly allow a healthy, his age, Pro Bowl level quarterback just hit free agency and roll the dice with it. And so it would be borderline unprecedented under the current you know, salary cap structures, franchise tags, right. all of that. But I've got to tell you, I would like it. Oh. I I think there are a lot of different ways, and you guys know I feel this way, but I reiterate it, to win the Super Bowl in the NFL. Obviously, the easiest way is have one of the two greatest quarterbacks ever, oh. Mahomes <laughs> and uh, Brady, right. because they have won a disproportionate amount you know, in the salary cap era. But if you don't have one of those guys, there's a lot of ways to do it. Young quarterback. Oh, you're the young, cheap quarterback, mm-hmm. mid-level quarterback with an amazing supporting cast, mm-hmm. below-average quarterback with this amazing defense. We've seen a lot of different yep. versions. The thing we have not seen is mediocre quarterback on superstar quarterback money. And if we look at, and this is a bunch of numbers being thrown at you real quick. I'll just put it up, and I'll walk you through it. The key here is that's their cap hit and the rank. Mm -hmm. So Mahomes and Brady were able to do it with top five cap hits, make the Super Bowl. Mahomes won it, obviously, back-to-back with the second and the highest. The only other one that if you're the Cowboys going to extend Dak, you're like, Matt Ryan 2016 with the third highest cap hit, but that year Matt Ryan won league MVP. They had the Shanahan system, all of that. There really isn't a precedent for it. So I just feel like... If Dak's right now, if Dak's agent right now is saying, starts at sixty million a year, right. guys, starts at sixty. Yeah, the reports are he wants. Yeah, 60. sixty. I mean, that's what it, that's where it would be. Wilds is, and that's what I've been telling you guys that it would be three years, one eighty to start with, almost all guaranteed. I might roll the dice instead, Brew, and risk getting back on that quarterback carousel rather than lock myself into having to tear down a team so I can pay the. Ninth or tenth or eleventh best quarterback in football, like he's the first, second, or third. Well, first of all, we have to realize this may be spin. Okay, this may be uh, the Cowboys putting this out there to sure. the media, right? Because this is being reported in a lot of different places sure. that they may be putting this out to the media to try to get some leverage. Because Dak has all the leverage. Okay. Sure. That said. I don't, I'm kind of with you. At first, I was thinking, oh, they got to sign him. They got to extend him. Because I don't think they should, like, be willing to move on from Dak, even though he is eighth, ninth, whatever, (laughs) somewhere between six and 10 or 11 as far as quarterbacks. Um, 
But if see the thing is, if they let him play out this year and they don't win the Super Bowl, it's not like they can't re-sign him as a free agent. Correct. And this is where I think it's starting to make sense because at first, when I first started seeing these reports, I was like, "Look, they got to sign him. You don't want to go from that five, six year stretch where you were between Troy Aikman and Tony Romo, and you're just searching for a quarterback. Yeah. All right, they're not good enough. As good as they are, they're not good enough. I don't think to have like a bad or mediocre quarterback." And really be a contender. Mm-hmm. So I want to keep Dak, okay? But if this year it's sixty million a year, which is those what the reports are saying, Kirk Cousins, and I guess you weren't. Are you looking at his age? Is that why you didn't? Cause, okay. Yeah, because he's thirty six and coming off an Achilles. Right now he just got forty five million. Yes. So what if they let Dak play on this prove it year? They go out in the second round again. He's okay, whatever. But they want to bring him back. They let him enter free agency. Is somebody giving him sixty million question. a year? He somebody might the most he might get would might be fifty two million a year. So you you're better off signing him next year as a free agent. I think unless you win the Super Bowl and you're willing to pay him whatever. So it, financially, it could make but, sense for them. So that's if I may jump yeah, back. No, in, the, the this is where I think the leverage could flip back to the Cowboys. Right now, the leverage is you can't tag me, you can't trade me, I'm going to be a free agent, my cap hits enormous, my, if, you're, if I'm not on your team because of how you structured it, you have $40 million in dead right? money mm-hmm. next year, all of it. If the Cowboys were to, I don't want to say call that bluff, but be like, we're just going to let this year play out, then it comes to, then this happens. How much is being the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys worth to Dak Prescott? Because I, I I was thinking he's about he's not nearly as big as he is right now if he's playing for another team. Exactly, that's my point. And so, and what are the teams that we think would be in the market for a quarterback a year from now? Because a lot of them are, you know, the Patriots, for example, we think are drafting a guy this yeah. year. We know the Bears are. So I made a list, by the way. Tennessee could be if Will Possibly. Levis is gone. The Raiders, if they don't draft a guy, mm-hmm. are on the list. Seattle, maybe. Okay. And then potentially both of the New York teams. You're going to put the Broncos the in The Jets there. and the Giants. I think if the Broncos Peyton. are drafting a guy this year. Okay. But the Raiders or Broncos, one of them will be. So the two New York teams are intriguing yeah, as can, possibilities. Right. But everywhere else, if I'm the Cowboys and I'm saying Dak Prescott, man, if this is about winning – we're in a better position than Seattle, Vegas, or Tennessee. And if it's about money, how much more money are they going to pay you that is then going to cost you in that you are now the Tennessee Titans starting right. quarterback right. So versus the Dallas Cowboys? You're being a celebrity. Exactly. And you're going to the AFC in that the, scenario. Right. Stay and, in the NFC. And so I know I'm kind of picking those teams, but there's not. There's only 32 teams. We know 25 of them would not be in the market for Dak. Look, but, okay, only a few something. teams uh, went out. Not, nobody was willing to break the bank for Lamar. Yeah. Okay, so I do think if they let it, I know he wanted the fully guaranteed deal. No, but I think. But let Dak go out there next summer, next offseason, I don't think anybody's offering him $60 million. Only a so few were willing smart. to go out for Kirk, too, um, when he yeah. was available. So the question is, is Dak the guy? And as you said, yeah. uh, how much is the star in your helmet worth? So this is Josh's graphic about the, cow, uh, excuse me, the last two Cowboys quarterbacks, Romo and Dak. Very similar numbers, mm-hmm. and we've seen Romo sort of walk into a king's fortune on broadcasting. He's a solid broadcaster. Some people have some uh, uh, constructive criticism. His popularity has ebbed and flowed, but some people love him, some people don't. That's the life of But I think it would be silly to look around and say, like, all right, there's a handful of major networks, and one of the, two of them, between Troy and Tony, are... Mm-hmm. Headed on the broadcast because they were, you know, right. Cowboys quarterbacks. Are all those? Is he getting all these deals off the, you know, non-football no, deals if he's on the Titans? He's not. I, I've said this, and I know it, it, it's like anathema to take less money, but he should. I think he should be like, look, less fifty-three a year, fifty-two, fifty-three million a year. So he hasn't delivered. Especially if you can then and take that money and win a Super Bowl. Right. It helps you keep Mike. I know they're going to keep Mike and CD anyway, but it helps you keep them and get them extended now. I just think, I, you know. I just would not if I were Dallas. I, he, Dak is not. Dak is old enough. And it, 
I would not be so terrified of, oh, my God, what, how awful we're going to look if we let this guy leave. Like that, there is a level. So you of, think there's a possibility yeah, of that? I'm, I, I'm saying they're keeping I, him regardless. I think that, for example, I believe Trevor Lawrence is going to get his extension this summer. If people believe Dak is, be- just follow me on this because <laughs> I, well, I think I might be able to convince you. On okay, this. I'm listening. Even if people believe Dak is better than Trevor, one of the things Trevor has going for him is because of his age <laughs> and his draft position. The idea for the Jags of, oh my God. If we ruin this relationship with this guy and he goes on to reach that full potential elsewhere, that is the type of mistake you can't recover from. I don't think people are worried about that with Dak. I don't think there's a concern of, oh, my God, if at 32 he goes somewhere else and reaches another level. I think we know what level Dak is at for good or for bad. And so because of that, I think the Cowboys, if they're willing to deal with the potential distraction of this year, of him being, you know, in a, you know, free agent year, and the cap hit of this season of 55 million, I think the smart move, the prudent move, mm. might be to wait and see rather than tie yourself to him at the, at a 55 plus million a year for the next the half decade. The concern, I, I would think, would be falling off as a team. Like, who, who's the replacement? Well, well that's, that's the thing. Right now, they don't have one. You right? have to go find somebody. Look, you can go. You can end up going a decade without a good quarterback. So that that would be my concern I mean, from the, the Cowboys. The, the other side of the coin is like having two good quarterbacks for the last two decades has not netted a Super Bowl appearance. They're relevant. The, oh, we talk. No. About, we're talking about them now. We talk about yeah, them all the time. We'd be, I think That's we'd, all Jerry was. I think we'd be talking about them if Trey was their quarterback. I don't think we I, – I, we weren't – when they, when they missed the playoffs. Not if they're 6 and 11. Yeah, they'd have to be I mean, 6 and 11 years a lot of years in a row for us to not talk about them. And so I, I think the Cowboys are going to stay relevant. They would have to really plummet to l- lose relevance. Uh, Chiefs lose a star. Well, Jerry Sneed famously made this game uh, changing play. Zay Flowers lost the ball, and well, three months later – Chiefs lost Legereus Bruce Sneed. still not over it. Every time he sees this I mean, highlight, Zay, Bruce, I'm just, Bruce, Bruce can't. It's a great play. It wasn't a mistake. I'm more it's upset kind of by his trash talk. 60-40 mistakes last great penalty. play. Uh, trade to the Titans for a third-round pick next year. Seventh-round pick swap. Here's a look at Sneed's best games where QBs tried to get the ball to Garrett Wilson, A.J. Brown, and Stefan. Didn't work. And look at the note. Uh, no touchdowns allowed all year. Yep. Uh, now he's on the Titans. Huge loss. But... It's a significant loss because he's a great player. And I want to say, listen, Legereus Sneed was a mid-round pick, paid, played four years with Kansas City, dealt with personal tragedy throughout that time, and before he got to the league, won back-to-back Super Bowls. And on this last Super Bowl run, I think made the single biggest play of any player in any playoff game, the one we just showed. Mm-hmm. I think as far as, like, win expectancy, swing the whole tournament, yeah. that punch out on Zay Flowers was the biggest play anyone made the yeah. entire postseason. So shout out to him. I'm also glad Kansas City didn't give him the deal Tennessee gave him. I'm glad he got it. Twenty, but a tw- he's. It's weird because of how old he was when he was drafted. Versus he was Chris, he was old. Chris yeah. Jones is 29. Sneed's 27. But Jones is considered like an old player, and Chris and Sneed's considered a young player. A 27 year old with a p- questionable knee at a position the Chiefs have sh- – the Chiefs let Kendall Fuller walk. He went to go make a Pro Bowl right. and played well. Chavarius Ward, let him walk. Mm-hmm. The Niners gave him a bunch of money. Honey Badger, let him walk. The Chiefs clearly believe they can draft and develop this position, and Sneed's yeah. an example of it. Yep. He, wasn't, he wasn't McDuffie a first-round pick. And so going into this offseason, I never thought it was realistic they extend – Chris and Legarius. I thought maybe they'd let Legarius play on the tag. They, you know, they, they, that ended up not happening. So I'm not going to act like this is a net positive for Kansas City for this season. But I think it was the prudent move and the move a lot of teams have trouble making. A lot of teams forget having if they had just won the Super Bowl, if they just had any success, they're like, we don't want to lose any of our contributing guys. Mm-hmm. This contract was, for me, a little too rich for my blood when I think McDuffie's about to get a massive deal at the same right. spot. And I'm happy for Legereus. So it's, it's a loss, but it's a position they can deal with it at. Yeah, look, nobody's going to sit here and say, oh. They can't win the Super Bowl now after what we just saw with that receiving court. Maybe in September, but not not now. 
Um, I don't think they got enough for him. I mean, a third-round pick, essentially a third-round pick. Yep. You got the pick swap, pick swap. Couldn't they have let him play out this year, and then they would have got a compensatory pick if he had walked? Well, the a third-round compensatory pick. Maybe, but the compensatory thing, then that, that would have to mean they don't sign free agents themselves because it's a formula. So it's not as cut and dry as if you lose a big free agent, you get a compensatory pick. It's if you lose a big free agent and don't sign one of your own, then it, it, then you can get a compensatory yeah. pick. But theoretically, but what they wouldn't have brewed if they did that – this opens up twenty million in cap space yep. right now they that need they need to, to sign their own guys or mm-hmm. extend they guys or whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so look again, he's a very good player. Um, they got McDuffie. They'll, I think they have, as you said, had a history of replacing defensive backs, and so I, they'll be fine. Um, I, Tennessee is man. They what's stacking Tennessee up. up to? They, are they, they believe in love. They, yeah, they do. They're well, putting everything around him to make him successful. So we'll see. And, and I think just real quick, I think one of the reasons that he only went, pardon me, for a third round pick was because of the contract. Yes, absolutely. You know, like so. Snead, if the if Snead were you know available still on his rookie deal, mm-hmm. I think it would have been realistic that the Lions might have given up the 29th pick of the draft. Certainly a team oh, would have yeah. given up a second rounder. But because it was trade for him and then immediately yeah. give him almost $20 million a year, that obviously hurt what the trade yeah. return was going to be. Um, okay. Where's the line between riding for your guys and going totally overboard? Well, that's a good question. Current Chargers coach and former Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh thinks J.J. McCarthy is the best quarterback in the draft and had the best pro day he's ever seen. Take a listen. I've said it before. I think it's well documented. I I think he's the best quarterback in the draft. Um, And that's just what I think is my opinion. Um, He's the one who plays quarterback, you know, of all the quarterbacks that are in the draft. There's great quarterbacks in the draft. I think he plays quarterback the best of any quarterback in the draft. <laughs> it was a little, a little jumbled, what he what? said. Your reaction, bro. And grew. speaking of which, I just noticed the smiley faces, so I'm with you. Oh, on a doubt. <laughs> yeah, I just okay. noticed that. Okay. I, I thought it was like a white yeah. sweatsuit yeah. until that. Uh-huh. Um, look, you guys know my take on these quarterbacks. I'm not saying he's the best. That's clearly an overstatement. But there have been enough quarterbacks who were the third, the fourth best quarterback in their draft, you know, according to draft position, who have emerged to be great. Yeah. And so I'm not going to sit here and write him off. I do think he has tools. He's accurate. He's smart. He, he doesn't make many mistakes. He's got a little bit of athleticism, like a little sneaky athleticism, enough athleticism. Um and he's shown that he's a winner. The only real knock I see against him, and I'm, again, I'm not saying he's better than Caleb or Jaden or any of that, but the only real knock I think you can make against him is why didn't you throw the ball more? Yeah, of course. And then he had games throwing it 30 times. I mean, he, he did have some. Championship. And they, like, that's well. the thing. They, maybe that was just their strength. They knew they were a great running yeah. team. But, I mean, honestly, I think – that's really the only knock you can say. And it's fair. Why didn't you guys throw more? Well, no, the other knock is I think if people watched the games, there weren't a lot of people that watched it and said that guy's a future top five pick. And while you're poo-pooing Jim Harbaugh, there's a probably a one in three chance that J.J. McCarthy is your next quarterback. The idea that J.J. McCarthy might end up going is... I'll fall it, in line the, if that's the case. It, 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 which is absolutely <laughs> on the board. He could go two to Washington... Unlikely but possible. Three to New England. I, I don't even want to say unlikely, Who's but falling? wouldn't be my we're, bet. I don't, we're not taking the, J.J. over Jaden Daniel. No okay, possible I, I'm t- I, I guarantee you right now there are teams that have J.J. rated ahead of Jaden. I don't know if the Patriots are one of them, but just because of the frame of Jaden Daniels and the stylistic questions. But regardless, if he gets through the top three, then you are talking about the Giants, Denver, or Minnesota trading up to four or five Maybe. with the Chargers, four with the Cardinals, five with the Chargers, to get him. He's going to go super high. Here's the problem. I don't get it. And we had Mark Sanchez on on Friday. I asked him if he could explain what I'm missing. And Mark Sanchez, this is to me what I would call damning with faint praise when I was like, hey, what is it about J.J. McCarthy, the player, that I'm missing? And here's what he said. You don't have to get all 32 teams to love you. 
You don't. You just need one. And you want one team that happens to be pretty good, hopefully to move up and draft you. That's the best situation. So what he said is you only got to trick one team. He, he only got to get in the, He said, the, and, and what, more than one like him, though. No, I get it. And I, I'm with you. It's, it's a little odd it, just because he didn't throw it a lot in college. But is that why Harbaugh is really win. going to bat? It's like my game plan to get a national championship involved a lot of running the ball and not a lot of throwing the ball, airing it out. I would have liked to have heard him say that, to be honest. But they didn't win the national championship the year before. And you would have thought they could have done – they were a really good team, obviously. I People say that, oh, Harbaugh had Andrew Luck and didn't throw it that – when when Luck played under Harbaugh, he threw the ball 29 times a game. Then Harbaugh left, and the next year Luck threw the ball 31 times a game. So they were throwing it 29 – J.J. was throwing the ball 21 times a game. The, the, and, and a the, lot of – well, it's, the, the one game he only threw it eight. That right, the, but that was down, one of their biggest game. games of the year. The, and that, that was, wasn't Harbaugh. No, Remember, I understand that was, that was, was, that was more – so, but that's almost more to my point. The guy who was filling in for Harbaugh was like, all right, I can't screw this up. Let me just run the football. The ball, yeah, Let works. me just run the football. But it I, works. I, like, the guy won, so – I'm not going to kill him. I mean, because he, he – I, look, intangibles, it looks like – you know I'm a big intangibles guy. Looks like he has those. I just – I'm not a big fan of the pro day. Can we just – what are we doing here with these pro days? Well, can I, can, can I ask a question? People should be leery after Zach. I just – what are we going to do? Yeah, it's like, look at this pass. So they all look the no same. Defense. No, I agree with that, but just give me 30 seconds. Go. What are we evaluating them on then? I don't know. That the team won the title? Well, that helps. That, no, but that's but, no. You watch enough tape. I mean, but I'm saying I watched the Michigan games. It, he was not eye popping. You're now saying, understandably, forget the pro day. It's like, all right, he didn't throw very much in college. We shouldn't do the pro day. So this is based on what his interviews that he's good on the chalkboard. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I know Harbaugh, who is sitting at five and desperately wants a team to trade up so he can rebuild that team, has been selling this, selling that J.J. McCarthy's a transcendent player for a long time. Leave a receiver on the board. And it would, right. Oh, it, 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 it is right. in his interest for someone really? to want to trade up for quarterback. I do like champions, though. I'm a fan of champions. That didn't work out for you last time, buddy. Why he's still a national champion? Does he remind you of Mac Jones? Oh, this is. We should have maybe led with this story. Russ, I'm good with it. Brew's got a classic three. Oh, I'm real good with this. (laughs) Fox Sports Show, Sirius XM. Okay, quick math. The less your business spends on operations, on multiple systems, on delivering your product or service, the more margin you have, and the more money you keep. Obvious. But with higher expenses on materials, employees, distribution, and borrowing, everything costs more. So, to reduce costs and headaches, smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system bringing accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform and one source of truth. With NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required, accessed from anywhere. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you've got one unified business management suite. And you're improving efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. Over 37,000 companies have already made the move. So do the math. See how you'll profit with NetSuite. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to NetSuite.com slash FTF. NetSuite.com slash FTF. NetSuite.com slash FTF. Welcome back to the show. Mike Tomlin has two new quarterbacks on his roster. This didn't take it. Is Russ the starter? Not exactly. (laughs) Is there a QB competition? Maybe. Here's Mike Tomlin. Take a listen. We're not resistant to competition, but as I've mentioned several times of late, I just think it's appropriate to establish positioning as we get into this thing. And the term that I've used is Russell has pole position. Okay. It's a great video game and Russ's uh, status within the Pittsburgh organization. It's also the way a race starts. Yeah. Yeah, which is a competition. That's what the video game Yeah, it's called pole position. Okay, cool. Yeah. Brew, are you nervous Russ might... Not be the week one starter. Nervous? Okay, here we go. In fact, what does that mean? What is that? Blue? You remember said there was no competition. No, you remember this guy. Two weeks ago. Uh-huh. I said, I used the term number one on the depth chart. Yeah. Yeah. Tomlin used the term pole position. Yeah. Same thing. 
I said they should go in there. Russ should be number one on the depth chart. Yeah. And if it's close, even if Justin's a little better, if it's close or obviously Russ outplays him, Russ is the starter. And just Russ would have to be horrible. Justin would have to be great. And then you start Justin. This is exactly what I said they should be doing. Hold on, if, Russ should be the starter right now, but it's somewhat what, of a competition. What, that's, but hold on. I'm confused because that might have been what you said two weeks ago. But one week ago, yes, you were adamant. Day, I think, whenever it was, I, you were adamant that, that he would was, be on the team. That, 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 that Russ was the week one starter well, he, no matter he, what. He is the de- – no, he's number one in the depth chart, and I think he will. I do think he'll beat out uh, Justin Fields. But my point is this, because mm-hmm. we were talking about would he get cut if he's not – you know, if he's if Fields not the starts. week one starter. Even if Fields – which, I, I again, I sincerely think Russ will start and beat yeah. out Fields. But even if Fields were to get that job, Russ – it makes sense to me to keep him because what if Fields doesn't play well? Sure. What if Fields gets hurt? That, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, be, I think this is this is exactly – Tomlin and I are like okay, this. Ex- all right, so let me ask you this, bro. It's right. Are it's you, right are you I know you're not a gambler. No. But if I were to set the over-under on – and let's give him health, okay? It just, the bets, They're all healthy. Yeah, bets voided right. if there's an injury. Right. If I were to set the over-under on – Starts next season for Russell Wilson at 14 and a half. Oh. Would you take the over? No way. 13 and a half. Nope. 12 and a half. Is he asking you? Uh, I'm asking, <laughs> I'm asking when I'm there's a say, number. No, I'm you gonna, would I, feel I comfortable think he's going with. to start 13 and a half. I'm, I'm over that. Oh, or 14. Okay. If he starts 13, he'll likely start okay, 14. Okay, so you 15. think he's. So here's what I think. I think he can go there and play well. Yeah. I think if I, they had Russell. And again, I, uh-huh. you and I, we disagree on the degree, mm-hmm. but he wasn't quite as good as the numbers. But if Russell Wilson goes in there yeah. and plays slightly better, which I think he will, than last year. This team is good. So I think he's more likely to start zero than 15. I think he is more likely to get beat out in camp Mm -hmm. and to not be there. That's going to be hard for him. Don't you think it's going to be hard for him? No, not not, not that Tomlin's now had the door open. And here's the other thing. Here's the sneaky thing about last year's Russ's season it's not just the 26 to 8's wildly misleading, it's that. Okay, but it's, it's he had a great first month. First month of the year, 11 touchdowns, two picks, 106 rating. He's actually thrown for real yards. And in the last 10 games, everything plummets. Did the yards become embarrassing. Though? Yeah, that was the they game were the defense winning. couldn't. They, they were winning. They, oh, they, no, that's right. They were no. bad defense and they were losing, they, but he was He was playing the ball. well. He was yes. throwing ball. And then the end, they got on a little winning streak and then he got benched. The only thing that's consistent is six isn't bad. he's three sacks every single game. First five or last ten. 45 sacks and 15 starts, which is why he lost his job. Here's the other well, thing. Well, he and Fields have that if it's, issue. Correct. Yeah. If it's close, who do you think the locker room's going to like more? Because I got an idea. Justin Fields damn near is the mayor of Chicago in, in exile right now. What's the last locker room to love Russell Wilson? Somebody tell me. Who do you think NC is going to be more State popular? Or Wisconsin. In, in, no, or NC State. Wisconsin. He had to leave there Wisconsin. too, buddy. <laughs> and so, that, so, again, no, I, that, I, what? I don't think that's fair. Why? Because there are people around the league that like Russ. I understand. And he has to have been humble. Got it. He shouldn't go in there thinking about my office. <laughs> he shouldn't go in there making videos, talking about let's ride right. and all that. He – and Russ, I, Russ needs to be humble, bro. I get all that, but the question I'm every asking, reason to be which humble. is why I don't know why I'm surprised by your stance on this. What's better for the Steelers? If the Steelers Look, is if, like, it, well, I'll, I'll agree that just if they find a Jim and Justin Fields and he's their quarterback for the next seven years, that's great for them. That's great so, for them. So, uh, but I think Russ. You know, can play well. Was he's a, he needs a bounce back Why did, Can I ask you a question, bro? Why did Ryan Poles say, I think he said it again, that, that he did right by uh, Justin Fields to trade him to sit on the bench behind Russell Wilson? Honestly, I think he's being nice. I think he's being nice. So you think it's just a lie that somebody yeah. offered a fifth-round pick for him? Yeah, I don't think he was getting You don't think offers. Philadelphia would rather Justin Fields than Kenny Pickett? Because I do. And I, 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 I don't think he was getting great offers. I, 
No, but do you think he? Had, do you think this was his only offer? I think he's trying to uh, the fifth round pick. I mean, look, his future. It, Jalen is young. Mm-hmm. How old is Jalen? What? He's probably a decade a decade younger than Russell Wilson. I know. So Russ even if Russ starts 42. this year, yeah, but he's thirty five. I think. Sure. Even if he starts next year, the future could. You look at those two teams. Jalen Hurts is the future in Philadelphia. Russell Wilson may or may not be the future. And if it's if he is a future, it's only for a few years but, in Pittsburgh. But, Kirk Cousins is the future in Atlanta, and he's 36 and has one. Well, Achilles. Kirk has played better than Russ the last Listen, couple years. Russ should have chosen the Giants. I know we're about to get to them. He no. should have chosen the Giants. He would have no chance to he, play well. What he, he could beat out Daniel. He could have a better chance well, to be the no, starter. He could start, but how yes. good would they be? Buddy, Pittsburgh has Russell a chance. Wilson is the starter. Is not going to be good. Pittsburgh has a chance. Okay. All yeah. right. I mean, yeah. I don't want to run down the list of skill position players again, Giants. but they got some. Giants seem to have kicked the tires on several quarterbacks, including Russ. There was a report that they had, quote, buyer's remorse after giving Daniel Jones a $160 million contract. Well, Greg Jennings isn't the only one who believes in Jones. Dayball does uh, via Tom Pelissero. We're excited to have Drew Locke, and he knows what his role is going to be. He's going to get a lot of reps this spring. He needs to learn our system. But again, excited to get Daniel back when he gets back. He'll be the guy. Okay. That's right. Should Danny Dimes be the guy? Well, listen, obviously not, but this is the world the Giants have built for themselves, and they deserve to live in it. The, the Gi- no, no, no. The, what, what Brian Dable and Joe Shane have done with the Giants the last year and a half is really remarkable. Everyone knew, everyone that the 2022 season was true. make-believe. And it was that it was th- that there was a lot of unsustainable factors in it. But they got high on their own supply that, no, 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 it was real because I'm a quarterback whisperer. So they tied themselves to this player. He had what? 15 touchdowns. The, right. So you, you're agreeing with me, yeah. right, Bru? Yeah. 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 And then that player play, was healthy for four games, the last of which was sacked Ten times. That's not his. The, but that's no, not his. No, fault. I know. I, okay. I'm, uh, this is actually a weird defense of Daniel Jones. Okay, good. And then he blew his knee out. And since then, they have leaked to everyone with a notepad for the Bergen record of the New York <laughs> Post. They hate the guy. And they can't wait to move on from him. And so, you signed him. He has the... the, the Brew, Deshaun, Dak, Kyler, Stafford... Only players with bigger cap hit than Daniel Jones this year, this coming season. Wow. You signed up for that. The guy got hurt on your watch. Yeah. You don't have a big enough sample post signing up for it to be like the guy's terrible. And now you're telling me when the guy's terrible. You deserve this. You built this this situation. Well, look, he, he does deserve to be the guy going into camp. This is like the Pittsburgh situation, but he should get even more rope than Russell Wilson. Because you're paying him $40 million. Yeah, Drew Locke is Drew, Drew Locke. Yeah, he's the backup. No, yeah, he's the, the backup. Is, Drew Locke doesn't have the promise that Justin Fields has. They can still draft the quarterback. But my yeah. point is, you ha- I would give Daniel Jones every opportunity to show me he can play. Well, we did pay him $40 million. There's still two more years left. I know it's not guaranteed. But let him play. And if he goes out there and he's bad, then we just completely wash our hands of him. You got to let him play rather than benching him. And I mean, I guess you'd no, know then too, no, but no, let him I play. Don't Drew Locke's not the guy. I think this is so much about Drew Locke, Brew. I think it's about whether or not the Giants are it, it going would be to how much draft they like. a quarterback. It would be how and, much they like. And that's a bad situation to bring a quarterback into. Because yeah. well, like, Daniel Jones still probably is the starter. And if he's not, you got a $40 million backup yeah, no, that people are going to be wondering. Yeah. If the if the rookie doesn't, doesn't play well, no. Yeah, but, but this is what they hired. This is what Brian Dable's job is, guys. He ran Wink Martindale out of the building, yeah, right? Great. He they, they, he signed off on giving Daniel Jones this money, and this is and th- that this was just is such a right, horrible. Move. At some point, you're accountable for these things. Oh, that's Belichick's music that, coming in. I know. I'm just I'm just saying, like Warriors next. I'm fine with blaming the quarterback until you pay the quarterback. Uh, Warriors are a lot like me talking about the Patriots. I think the dynasty is still going, but everyone else knows it's over. Really? You think it's still going? No, he doesn't. Just let him have For what? It. Let him the Warriors or the Patriots? Yeah, the Warriors. Oh, no, that's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. I'm sorry. I shouldn't interrupt. <laughs>
<laughs> Golden State lost to the Wolves as Steve Kerr rested Steph for 11 minutes in the third and fourth. Here's uh, Kerr post game. We can't expect to, to just ride Steph um, game after game after game. You, you know, these last few weeks have been really tough on him. We've, we've, we've put the burden of this franchise on his shoulders for <laughs> 15 years. Um, we can't expect him to play 35 minutes. We got five games in seven days on this road trip. So um, if you want to say that him playing 30 minutes instead of 32 is the difference in the win and the loss, I, I totally disagree with that. Gotta, gotta wear a suit. It probably <laughs> Nick, what are these? The, the standings? The standings is the correct. Standings, then. <laughs> Good job, Wild. Yeah. Uh, Warriors, right there, just barely ahead of the frisky Rockets inspired by Shingoon's absence. Bro, <laughs> who's to blame if the Warriors miss the play-in? The front office. Oh. Well, I was saying all last offseason – Get some size. We're saying that. This is what they started yesterday. Mm -hmm. Six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, three, six, four. That doesn't do it. They're high school teams bigger than that. <laughs> I mean, really, really. Like, that's ridiculous. This is the NBA, it's and I get it. small ball. That's what they're playing. Small Sarge doesn't play much anymore. You know, Looney's now coming off the bench. Um, they, they should have gone out and gotten some size. And I know it wasn't great necessarily great size available, but you just need some heft. And they didn't go do it. So I'll say the front office first. Secondly, Nick, he, he was my guy. And I I I I enjoy many a an opportunity to mock you on this guy's behalf. Oh. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. All right, and he got him. He helped him get a ring, so he he did his part. So did Jordan, Poole. but he's really falling off. I mean, you, you know, he you think he averaged 18 points over his first four years with the Warriors. This year, he's down to 12. He's not shooting it as yeah, nearly when as well. He's there. So him, I mean, for them to have any chance to be a factor in the West, they would they needed him. He's only 29. Yeah, they needed him to be Andrew Wiggins. And he hasn't been, so he would be second on my list. Okay, so I wasn't going to put either one of those, that, that group or Andrew Wiggins, on the list. I'm also not going to put Steph on the list. Okay. No, no. Nah, nah. Now, listen, we can sh Steph's last 15 games, he's struggled. Uh, he's shooting you know, below 40%. We can show it to you, I think, around 34% from three. But this is where I remind everyone that he's 36. Right. Michael Jordan's last playoff victory, he was 35. Kobe Bryant's, he was 33. Like we have, and Steph is closer in their size than he is to the other legends of the game, who a lot of them, by the way, Bird and Magic didn't age well either. Magic, obviously, it's a different scenario and for him. Was and, and, and Bird was injury. So you're not supposed to be awesome in, you know, into your mid-30s. LeBron was, and LeBron won a title at 35, and he's their rival, so we change our, what mm. we expect of it. But Steph alone is no longer enough to just guarantee you a spot in the tournament, which is why the other healthy Hall of Famer would have been nice if a quarter of the season he wasn't suspended. Mm. And I understand that I am trying to have a better relationship with Draymond Green. However, fair is fair. <laughs> New or old media, you have to call out what it is. If the Warriors miss the playoffs by a game, which right now they could. Yeah, right. How much is that different if Draymond Green could keep his hands, arms, elbows, legs, and feet to himself and isn't suspended or de facto suspended for 21 games this season? You have the numbers? I mean, they were 10 and 11 in those 21. And so I in, in the games yeah. that he missed due to suspension. Go ahead, bro. There were there 11. This is to back up your point. Yeah. 11 and 14 without him this year, yeah. 25 and 20 with him. So yeah. they'd be safely they, in the playoffs. You would think, and again, the would they be a championship year. contender? No. But this is, there is, to me, a level of, you know, when the Grizzlies season went awry, before Ja got hurt, when they started out, what they started, like 6 and 14 or whatever, it was like people were going to say fairly, well, Jaws' foolishness cost them the whole year because it all happened at once. It was the beginning of the year. Is that not a similar, at least apples to, you know, a green apples example of if Draymond's suspension, mm. they missed the play-in by a game? There's no Correct. doubt they're in the playoffs with it. Yeah. No doubt. Playing. Rockets 10-1 and one in their last 11. Yeah, Watch but that goes against you. I mean, Shingu's not they, playing. Uh, they were 3-4 when Shingu got it. hurt. Tomorrow, it's the sunniest segment in all sports, and I don't know why Joker looks like that. It's supposed to be a happy segment. Everyone's like, everyone's very Yeah, upset. none of them really yeah. look happy. Yeah. 
king of the hill. I'm going to change that. Shout out to my surgeon that watches the segment. Yeah, shout out to the surgeon. <laughs> Robert Sala speaking at the league meetings in Florida. Last year, Sean Payton accused accurately uh, the Jets trying to win the offseason. This year, Sala is enjoying the air quotes quietness. He is Steve Weish. I think uh, general manager Joe Douglas has done a really nice job adding some really cool pieces to the football team. But yeah, it's quiet. Last year was a little loud, and <laughs> welcome a little bit of quietness. Oh. Brew, who's under more pressure this year to make some noise? Sala or Rogers? I mean, to, I'm shocked this is even a question. Really? I mean, I know we discussed it, but I'm still <laughs> shocked that you got Sala. He will likely get fired if they don't play well, and it will likely be his last head coaching job. You, you think it'll be his last? I mean, head yeah. coaching? Yeah, I, I, Right? I think yeah, he'll go course, somewhere maybe. as a D.C. or a defensive yeah. coach somewhere. And maybe in a decade get another shot, but probably not. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Right. Go ahead. And Rodgers, I get all the – he's running his mouth. I, and I've said it myself. They got a lot of nice players around him. It's on him if they yeah. can't make any noise. But if they don't make noise, if he's bad, guess what? He's 40. That's what it'll be. He's 40. Everybody's not Tom Brady. Oh. It's not going to damage his legacy. I, I don't disagree think with that. I think, it, the, I think what's damaged his legacy to some degree, I guess, is all the chatter that he does, you know, the, the, the theories and everything he throws out there. But his play, I don't think anybody's going to look at him as less of a quarterback I, if at 40 years old he doesn't play well so, with the Jets. Well, he also didn't play well with the Packers. Okay, for one year. He won the two MVPs. Three, four so, years ago. So as you know, I famously say Aaron Rodgers hasn't thrown for 300 yards in 23 games and that the Packers were right, got right what the Patriots got wrong where they saw a franchise quarterback and they saw that he was declining and they said, you know what, it's time to go to our other guy, Jordan Love, and they've proven to be correct. And people yelled at me on social media, even though I'm beloved on social media, say, Wilds, what proof do you have that he's fallen off? I said, uh, okay, Josh, can we make a list of quarterbacks who have thrown for 300 yards since Aaron Rodgers did. And here's the list, and I'll pass the ball to you, Nick, because there's 50 guys. Really? Wow. This is the list of guys who have thrown for 300 yards. Zach Wilson! Yeah. <laughs> but all right. Wow. I know well, that was just everybody. alphabetical by first name, but that was a hell of a punctuation at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I think he needs to so, throw for 300 yards. I'm so not sure he can. Here's why I totally disagree with you, Brew. Who's under more pressure this season, Jason Tatum or Jordan Poole? Tatum. Of course, because there's expectations and he actually has a legacy. Robert Sala ain't got no legacy. Robert Sala is a long list of guys that was an excellent coordinator. They got a head coaching job, wasn't good at it, and go back to being a coordinator. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just what it is. And by the way, even if they win this year, do well this year, not win the Super Bowl, but have a good year, that's what's happening eventually. The Robert Sala story is written. <laughs> the question is when the if the final chapter is occurring in January of 2025 or January of 2026. That's it. Aaron's in a different boat because it's not about this year. It will be it's an odd last half decade. Oh, hold on. It, half de yeah. He won two MVPs right. in that half exactly decade. Exactly right. Which is so, why he should have had so, Right. Success. So here's the thing, Brew. He's he was, he was Bro. what, how old was he? Bro, he's 37, supposed to, he's 38 supposed to be a top MVP? five all-time guy. That's who he is. He's got four MVPs. He's supposed to be won a Super Bowl. His third year as a full-time starter. Won the Super right. Bowl. And then he had some weird, you know, it's weird. It's like you're 15-1, and one, you lose. Yeah, you get blown out in back-to-back -back conference title games. It's weird, whatever. But then you get rid of McCarthy, you get LaFleur, you win MVPs, and how'd it go? Tom Brady comes into your building and beats you in his first year in the NFC. The next year, Jimmy Garoppolo comes into your building a win. He, yes, and do you score one touchdown in that game. You lose 13-10. to 10. The next year, the Detroit Lions come into your building to finish your career as a Packer mm -hmm. out of the playoffs. Then next year you tear your Achilles. And then if this year goes bad, it's not about his age 40 season. It's about the last half oh. decade. Like, how, Look, I'm, you, how did Aaron Rodgers win one playoff game and two MVPs 
in the final five years of his career. You know I am the champion of the Rodgers hasn't played well in the NFC title. Yes. So I'm with you on all, everything you said up to this year. Mm-hmm. And you're, if we want to go back to the last half of his year and you want to debate him and Manning and all right. that, so that's fine. But this one but season, what I'm saying nobody's is, gonna say he wasn't good no, at forty. No, but oh, what, he wasn't as good as we thought. What I'm he was. saying is the only way to redeem this last verse of his career is by doing something with the Jets. He's got to win a playoff game. Like it, one playoff. What's game. that going to do? What's, Bro, uh, if he wins one playoff uh, game, what's that going to do? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. That people, if, go back and look at Favre's end with the Packers. Not good. His year with the Jets, not good. But then he had that Minnesota. one year with Minnesota. Yeah. Well, he played two, but the one great year. Almost won MVP, won a playoff game, got to the conference championship game. We don't look at Favre's last half, you know, last era of his career as a sad one. But it's, Aaron, just, it's just what? Really two seasons. I think it's five. That he would I, not have played well. He got I, two MVP. Yes. Live from New York, it's the show that is debuting a brand new segment in approximately two minutes. It's the second hour of First Things First. It's brand new. We just put a new graphic on it. Today, Sean McDermott fires back at criticism mm. of Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Meanwhile, are the Patriots and someone on this show ready to fall in love again. <laughs> you know, it's been some time, but I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. <laughs> Maybe it's Back not me, in though. love again. Uh, uh, but right now, it's time for a brand new segment inspired by Jerry Jones, oh. who over the weekend said that there are, quote, a handful of quarterbacks who haven't won a Super Bowl that will win a Super Bowl. We often call that the confetti test. Now, here's how it works, obviously. If you close your eyes and can picture a quarterback at the Super Bowl drenched in confetti, he passes the confetti test. If you can't, well, bad news. Your favorite team might need another quarterback. So who passes the five-year confetti test? According to Brew, we're about to find out. First up, Dak Prescott. Maybe he gets an extension that makes him the highest-paid quarterback in football. Maybe Dallas lets the contract play out. Brew, Jerry is a solid yes here, but can you see Dak passing the confetti test and winning a Super Bowl within the next five years? I know people think (laughs) with the F grades and the tomato cans that I don't like Dak and the Cowboys and all that. I I do like Dak. Really? Really? I I like Dak a lot. Oh. And I wish I could give a different answer. Okay. But... No, no, it's a no. Not in fact, no. I don't. I don't see it. So I, I agree with you. I think that their best chance was each of the last two years. I think it's going to be hard for them to be better positioned with Micah on the rookie scale, with CD on the rookie scale before Tyron left. Right. You know what I mean? And all of that, to, and with the regular season records they had. So I, I agree with you that I don't think they're going to win a Super Bowl. Then isn't it time? To move on, I know Jerry thinks that Dak is an obvious yes, but if you guys are both saying no, if you were in charge of the Cowboys, like, you know what? Doesn't pass the competitive test. We need to move on. They're an S Bob team. We've all agreed on. You guys have come around. We don't around agree. On we that. Don't agree no, on that. We don't. Agree. We don't. We don't. <laughs> they're completely S Bob. But anyway, there's still something to be said to be about being really good. And in the conversation every year. There is. Okay, so Brew just there is. Can, Barf. The, but just real Really quick, good? The, in the conversation? There's hope. Oh, the editor of People magazine. Would, <laughs> would the, did the Knicks win? No, let's go to Utah. Okay. Would they die to go back to the Stockton Malone era right now? <laughs> That's a yes. decent, Thank that's you. A decent take. Thank yes, you. But they I were in the hunt. You saved that. Now take. they're just an afterthought. But, but, just save the take. Real it's a, quick, it's a great but take. That's, to your point, that's why, Wilds, if, you know, an hour ago when we started the show, I think Brew and I were both, maybe to different degrees, but okay with the idea of the Cowboys potentially losing Dak Prescott in a year yeah. rather than a guy that neither one of us can close our eyes and say he's winning a Super Bowl in the next five years, signing him up to be the highest-paid quarterback in the league seems super scary. Doesn't pass a competitive yeah. test. Head to Baltimore. Uh, Lamar, youngest player to ever win two MVPs, has now added Derrick Henry to his offensive arsenal. Brew, you rode for Baltimore last year. You wore your pur- purple Jordan yeah. threes. Can you see Lamar winning a Super Bowl in the next five years? Does he pass the confetti test? They let a brother down. 
Um, but that said, let's see this graphic. This you, this is hard for me to look at this graphic because somebody's missing uh -huh. who used to be on it all the time. He's a quarterback. Jimmy G, where art thou? But anyway, Lamar, you see, he's third all time uh, in this since the merger, of course, of quarterbacks' winning percentage. What is what do all those guys outside Lamar have in common? They're better than him. <laughs> okay, but what do they all have in common? They won Other Super than Bowl. that, they won Super Bowl. Super Bowls. Plural. That's the thing. They won Super Bowls. All yeah. of them won at least two. Yeah. He's going to get one. Oh. Now I know. Look, next five years, Mahomes is getting at least two. Well, that's the problem. Maybe three. <laughs> so there's only a couple left. But I think Lamar's going to get one. Okay, there you go. Okay, I think Lamar's going to get one. My answer is no. Oh. This the. Uh, I don't think they're going to be in a better position than they were this year. And this year, they weren't good enough. And the, while we can make, even if you say Lamar's play this year is going to be his new standard, not winning MVP every year, but that's going to be what we get from him, you're not going to get the number one defense in football every year. You're just flatly but you not. You might get a top five. You know I, that. That's what no, they do. Of course. But I'm saying it's hard to imagine them having a better defense than they did this past year. Yeah. That's at least statistically speaking. And it they couldn't get over the hump. And they they were, to me, wildly unimpressive in the game against Kansas City. No, they just the, need to get They just past. lost their minds. The, they forgot who they were. Yeah, they, 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 it's the crazy. They, per, they acted like they had the MVP at quarterback. But if no, but he, is but, crazy. he doesn't make that play. They win that game oh, and then they beat wait, the Wait, 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 they, wait, 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 they win they the game. They went a long way and beat You said it was the game changing I, I play. I said it was the most important play. I didn't most say important they win play, the so game. if it doesn't happen, what happens? They, I, I don't know. What makes I, it important? That, n here's that the thing. The game. They will run the ball better this year with Derrick Henry yeah. and they will be more mature. Should they get that deep in the playoffs again, they will not kill themselves with all those unsportsmanlike penalties. And Zay Flowers has learned his lesson. I'm quite sure. Okay. Even if he didn't make that play, if he had scored there, the Chiefs sold the lead. Yeah, 17. It would have been 17-14. Yeah, but then Lamar would have had momentum. Okay. Head to Buffalo. <laughs> John McDermott will tell you that the Bills' seasons haven't been failures. Have they failed to advance past the AFC Championship? Yeah, but that's different. Brew, do you see Josh Allen winning a Super Bowl in the next five years? I think, and maybe I'm just saying this because I see some stylistic similarities, size and all that. I feel like he'll be like Elway. And maybe win a Super Bowl later in his career. Wow. But within the know? next five, it pains me to say this because y'all know I like Josh. Within the next five years, wow. I'm going to say no. Oh, wow. I'm going to say no with that next correct. five. Wow. I, I'm, I'm three for three on no's. Okay. I agree with Drew. You're not going to say, you the, think Mahomes winning the next five. Well, you, I guess we'll <laughs> wait and see. But I, the, the Bills just keep getting worse. And the team is now getting worse. Yeah. And there's and they still I don't think any of us think they have the right coach. And I know that, you know, the coach and we'll talk about it thinks that's a you know, that this level of expectation is a criticism. It's actually a compliment. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, I just I think that right now there are at least two teams in their own conference that are better than them consistently in Cincinnati and Kansas City. At least in the biggest spots, and then there's Baltimore. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and so, and, other teams and that's just better. to get, again. That's just to get to the Super Bowl. That's going to be the other hard thing for any of these AFC teams is getting. If you beat Mahomes in the Arrowhead Invitational, even if it's held in your building, are you going to feel like that was the Super Bowl? Oh, are you then going to have a level of like yeah. I don't want to say letdown. You no, understand what I mean? But something with Absolutely. that for the next week. Go ahead. Head to Jacksonville. Where former high school standout and number one pick Trevor Lawrence is wow. entering year four. <laughs> Last year, 21 touchdowns, 14 picks, but sputtered down the stretch and took a 98% chance of making the playoffs. He got hurt. 98%. Did he play? He Not all play. games. It's yeah. football. He got hurt. You get dinged. Bro, can you see the Prince winning a Super Bowl in the next five years? This is an odd one because as much as I think the pomp and circumstance on this show surrounding the Prince what? is way overdone, yeah. he doesn't really deserve trumpeters, okay? There's a little part of me that's wondering. I'm going with a no. Okay, another no. But it wouldn't, like, knock my socks off just for some reason, but I'm saying no. Okay. So I'm gonna, a lot of no's for this. I would have called it something else. I'm going to surprise you guys here. 
I'm, no. I'm also yes. going to say oh. no. Wow. Oh! Because I don't, I don't trust the infrastructure in Jacksonville. I don't like. I don't think Trent Baalke's done a good job. I don't like the moves they've made this offseason. They clearly thought they were going to be able to keep Ridley, and then they didn't. So they spent the, like they spent the money elsewhere, and to me, it wasn't great money that was spent. And listen, I, I know that when Tua loses in the playoffs to the Chiefs, Wilds' take is, what do you want from him? It's the Chiefs. Well, well Trevor, I, I don't know. He led the league in passing. But when in Trevor passing. loses in the playoffs around later to the Chiefs, Wilds, you know, it wants him to be in a quarterback competition with Mac Jones. So I get we have we have Maybe. double standards on this show, <laughs> but uh, I I will be I will take Wilds' mantle as the mayor of Fair and be honest here. I don't think the Jags are winning a Super Bowl in the next five years. No. Do we got one more? We got one more. Oh yeah. Finally, San Francisco. Speaking oh. of leading the league in passing. Brock Purdy has gone to the He's NFC Championship really have four no's. and the Super Bowl <laughs> overtime. Patrick Mahomes. Brew, do you see Purdy winning a Super Bowl in the next five years? What am I big on with quarterbacks, Wild? Intangibles. Intangibles. Nonsense. Intangibles. He loves intangibles. Intangibles. And Brock Purdy is overflowing with intangibles. What? what are He's you? smart. They like that, him in the locker room. Those are he tangible. works hard. He's high character. All, he just I done the galvanizes passer, guys. Uh-huh. But what about all the real? And he's played well. He's oh. played, he was fourth, fourth in MVP voting, if I remember correctly. Number one pass. Yes! Wow. And a lot of it is his teammates, because he's got great teammates. But yes, and I, I, I'm not saying it's going to be this year, but I think Brock Purdy will get one okay. within the next couple of years. So I think that he will look back years. on last year as the best year of his career in every way. The furthest he ever got in the playoffs, his best statistical season, all of the above. It's overtime so, of the Super Bowl. Yeah. To go further. I got, well, you, you know how you can go further? If, if Bruce right, you big doofus. The win question the is, Bowl. win the Super Bowl. You agree He's with saying you? yes. I'm saying no. Mahomes couldn't I, beat him in regulation the, of the, the Super Bowl. Okay, that's a great take. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, so I know I gave five no's, but that doesn't mean that I think no one's going to win one. So can I? Yeah, let's see. I'll, I'll just lay. I can just okay, lay out for you the next five, five years. Mahomes. Yes. No, let's, it's let's not. See the next five it's years. not. Show it. Mahomes, oh, then CJ, who's now my guy because Brew didn't even consider him. Then Mahomes again. <laughs> then no. Caleb and uh, his rookie <laughs> deal. Oh, and then Mahomes again. The Guys, when when quarterbacks are awesome, they get there on their rookie deal. Okay, you just that, said Trevor Lawrence. Is he, is, you, you Tre- just listen, Trevor's Trevor been Lawrence. let down by his t- franchise, but so I think CJ and Caleb can get there in the next five years. I think Mahomes wins three in a row, like meaning this year. Mahomes wins three of the next, next five. Next year is Stroud. Or and then yeah, Stroud. and then Stroud and Caleb. Like this idea, Stroud that, is. I, I we didn't surprised. have him on the list. You, so you picked he's the list. He's still my guy. He's no, definitely you my guy. The list. He's still your guy. You, you still told me. Why did you do the confetti test? Why gave me the list. Why didn't you do it? Because Hubs didn't oh, put him on the go. list. That's Stroud. That's on Hubs. This, no, Stroud, this is Stroud's confetti test. <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to do that segment again. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little something we tried. Uh, Bill's coach, Sean McDermott, uh, has watched Jordan Poyer, Travis White, Mitch Morse, Gabe Davis leave the team, but he's still optimistic and batted down any criticism. The last few years have been a failure. To say we haven't had success or Josh hasn't had success, I think that would be kind of narrow-minded. It's hard to win in the NFL, so you kind of regroup every year and you take it one game at a time. But we're all looking for Josh to really be the face of the franchise. I liked this. Nick, did you? Well, no. I mean, it's just, it's either disingenuous or it's just naturally lowering expectations. Like, I, Mm. obviously, there are 25 at least teams that would trade their last five years for the Bills' last five years. Yeah. So that is, by that definition, successful. The problem is the Bills have operated as if they live in the neighborhood with the other half-dozen teams, all of which have been more successful than them. All of which. And so, and the other problem for Buffalo is, and I made this point last year, and now I'm going to make it again this year because now we have another year where it's true. They keep getting further away. Mm. 2020, AFC title game appearance. Yeah. 2021, divisional round epic 13-second game on the road. 2022, blown out at home in round two. 2023, had to... 
go on a five-game winning streak just to sneak into the playoffs to then lose at home in round two again. So each year, they have gotten further away from where they were in 2020, which is the closest they have been, which the closest they have been was getting blown out in the game before the game you're trying to get to. Yeah. So that's what it is. Like, I, I, that's not unfair. And the reason we, Brew, have these expectations is because Josh is considered what he's considered. But there's a weird math on it where it's like, if you don't think Josh Allen's a top three quarterback, you're a hater. If you judge our team like we have a top three quarterback, you're being unfair. Yeah. Pick a lane. Yeah. I would say I agree with a lot of what you said. Although I would say this year, this past year, was they got fir- was better than a year ago, two years ago. I mean, they were embar- they looked bad in the playoffs two years yes, ago. Yes, but that even when they beat Miami and in the next game, but know, they looked Cincinnati great throughout Miami. that regular season. They won 12, 13 games. They were never right. at risk of missing the playoffs. You finish this year strong. You play Kansas City tough. You know, you lost in the fourth quarter. I mean. I- I thought this year – I mean, it's, it's, it's a minor sure. difference. But anyway, uh, look, he's right, though. You're, you're right, obviously, the goal is to win a Super Bowl, and they put the big Lombardi trophy in there or, or the poster in their uh, practice facility. But they have been successful, and so is Josh Allen. Look, Dan Fouts, Warren Moon, Phillip Rivers never even got to a Super Bowl. So, And I'm, I think Josh, hopefully he will – but I'm just saying, just because you don't win it or get there doesn't mean you're not successful. And look at – and this is more Josh Allen in the Bills. Pat, this is since 2019. He's second to Mahomes in passing touchdowns. He's first for quarterback in rushing touchdowns. And third for any position, obviously running backs would be there. And then total touchdowns, he even has more than Mahomes since 2019. You know, so he work. and the Bills yeah. – have but, been successful. But that's you know what that reminds me of? The Sixers and Embiid. It is Show right, me, but I mean uh, is, is that, that is, you know what I mean? Show me won the stats but, and his MVP and, and points per game and all of it. But then show me how his contemporaries have all been further in the postseason than he has. Like that's the problem. The well, problem. he's been to the conference championship yes, game. Like. I understand that Embiid hasn't, but the point is Lamar. No, but I'm saying like Lamar. L- Lamar's, Lamar's been, been as right. far. Burrow's been further. Mahomes has been further. You guys think Purdy is one of his contemporaries. He's been further, yeah. you know what I mean, last year and just as far the year before. Or I guess both years Purdy's been around. He's been further just that year. Like, you are, you're, I don't know, like, how nice of a car you have is judged based on kind of how nice of a car your neighbors have. Like, you could have a car that you think is awesome, and if people drive bruised Maserati and whatever fancy (laughs) car Wilds has next to it, it's like, my car doesn't look so great. Josh Allen wants to live in the neighborhood of Rolls Royces and Porsches and all of it, and then be like, hey, this is a gorgeous Acura. Like, but there's is, really only but one guy in the, that neighborhood who's shining. All the, the rest of them have different been further degrees. than him. Okay, but the, Burrow, I mean, okay, Burrow got to the Super Bowl yes. and lost. Yes. All right, so he really the, hasn't won. No, but. You know, I know Bur- he's won a conference Burrow championship. Burrow has but played I, Josh in the playoffs. But Burrow's also injury prone. But, and Josh individually the, has played really well. Like, I, Mahomes is the one guy that is like. The, He's making no one, it tough on everybody. No one thinks this. You actually kind of sound like a fan of Josh Allen. I know Buffalo does not particularly mm-hmm. love you, mm-hmm. but the expectations that you have for Josh Allen show a certain level of respect for him. Is that the wrong? I, no, I, read? it's just I think that there is. I think you're mostly correct, which is if you are considered a perennial MVP candidate, if you are so wildly talented that when your team is 8-6, and six, there are smart people going on television saying, that guy's the MVP of the league. Then they expect one of these years for you to win one of these games. Yeah. And for it to be four straight years, Mahomes and Burrow have ended your season two in a row in your building, That's a, that is underachieving. You were favored. You were you have lost back-to-back home playoff games when you're favored. And I have bad news for you. AFC East just got reloaded. Oh. Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, if you missed the show, check out the podcast. Also, our YouTube channel has been pretty good. Uh, we're also now in stereo. I got caught watching our YouTube channel at the car wash this weekend. Really? I was watching myself on the YouTube, well, us, and someone looked over. Yeah, it's a little embarrassing. That's yeah. really embarrassing. Did they, did they call I you out? I was trying to critique some of your takes while so I've been trying to help you out, but they didn't know that. Harden <laughs> puts Maxi in a headlock. Uh, you're not allowed to do that. It's not going to earn you a win or a place on the medal stand. Rue's guy, though. That's why he's got him going to the conference finals, led by James Harden's leadership. Bronze medal, Giannis, my guy, my pick for NBA champion, my pick for, I don't know if he's league MVP right now, but it's quite close, and certainly my pick for the best player in the Eastern Conference. He had 30, 19, and 4, a nice win over the Thunder Sunday. Mm-hmm. Brew wants them to get some size. That's understandable. Silver medal, Anthony Davis, defense optional last night at the Crypt. 36 and 16. Lakers were up nine with like four minutes left, and then all of a sudden they're up three. It got closer than it should have been, but the Lakers were able to close it out. And then a goal. Jalen Green. You know, hot. You know, I used to work in Houston. And folks hot. down there, they're, you know, just asking the questions. Was Shingun holding us back? It's just the question people no are asking. No that heliocentric basketball, basketball really? Wilds, who all of a sudden Jalen I mean, Green can reach his full potential. He's playing great. 41 points in a win over yeah. the Jazz on Saturday for the surging Shingunless Rockets. There's the podium <laughs> from this weekend in the association. Check in on the team of the century, the New England Patriots, drafting at number three. Here's new coach Sherrod Mayo on taking or possibly taking the third quarterback off the board. Crazy thing, look, we're, we are open. We're open to, you know, trading the pick. We're open to taking a guy there. If we take a quarterback at three, that means we are convicted that this player is really the future of this organization. Thank you. I'm ready to fall in love again. With who? Jane Daniels. So that's your guy. I that's can't go. I can't go the whole way, unfortunately, because if we end up drafting Drake May uh, the next day, I'll be like, ah, I love Drake May. I have to fall in line. But. Here's the number one thing I like. We tried the whole, like, hey, let's try for a non-mobile quarterback. It worked for most of the century. Turns out, Mac Jones, not as good as Tom Brady. (laughs) Uh, I'm willing to put it in pen at this point. Uh, Tom Brady, career rushing yards for the Patriots, Mm -hmm. 1,037. Jane Daniels last year. 1,134. <laughs> so uh, there have been times watching the Patriots where I'm like, you know what, the offensive line uh, would benefit from a break that maybe you could scramble for two or three yards, and our current quarterbacks haven't so been able Jane's to do it. So your guy. Jaden's your guy. It doesn't mean you have to hate if they draft I'm someone hate else. Anybody, but, but yes, Jaden's your guy. You I would like us to draft Jaden. I would like to start ordering Jaden Daniels jerseys. I don't want to trade down. I don't want okay. right, Jaden guy. All right. You with me? Or you want me to take a I Michigan like guy? Okay. Well, if they draft J.J. McCarthy, you going to be all right? 